So why are females with autism and other essence missed? Well, in Swedish studies, and I haven't seen any other yet, uh, only those girls with a phenotype consistent with very severe autism in boys are diagnosed before the age of three to four, uh, a time when in our country most boys with any type of autism are uh, picked up and diagnosed. Most boys with clear autism, whether it's mild, moderate or severe, are picked up before the age of four in our country but only a tiny minority of the girls are picked up at that age, and only those who are even more severe in their presentation than the most severe boys. So young girls with autism are not picked up at all in our country. And specialists, even the ones who've heard me and other people from our center talk about this for years, they still think about autism and other uh, ADHD essence uh, problems as male disorders. It's sort of pervasive. Everybody thinks about, oh, but these are all male problems. Or at least in young kids, it doesn't really happen in girls, in young girls. Many girls who are later recognized as having autism have shown PDA type behaviors. That's pathological demand avoidance and feeding problems in the first few years of life. That's been consistently in our studies that long before they uh, sort of are perceived of as having autism, uh, they have presented with feeding problems or just saying no to everything. These are the stubborn no-sayers uh, uh, in, in the girl population. Uh, so many girls have had insistence on sameness around social themes. They insist on, you know, reality shows or watching them a hundred times or they, that, that are sort of social uh, and they are also uh, very interested in, in food or uh, very uninterested in food, but at least that they're insisting uh, on the same type of behavior. Whereas the boys, uh, people sort of think of the association with autism, if it's a boy who's spinning the wheels of a car or, you know, endlessly engaged in water games or doing uh, very uh, strange things with uh, uh, toys. Um, but girls usually are not openly so interested in uh, concrete things, but very interested in social and food things. When girls have early problems, anxiety and depression is what everybody thinks about. And so they only look for that. And everybody hears, if they're working in child psychiatry, for instance, everybody says that, oh, the most important thing is not to miss a depression and suicidal behavior. So you have to look out for that. But nobody says that much more common than depression and anxiety is ADHD, autism, etc. All the essence problems are more common. And so every child, and particularly every girl who shows up anywhere with a mental or cognitive or behavioral problem should be looked at from the point of view, could this be autism? Could this be ADHD? Could this be any of the essence type problems? We've also shown, and others as well, that girls have as least, at least as poor outcomes as boys, even in the cases that originally appear to be mild. In the study I just mentioned of 100 girls with social and attention deficits, some of the girls at the time that we saw them, when they were uh, 2 to 16 years of, or, or 18 years of age, uh, seemed to be relatively mild. They did meet the criteria of autism and or ADHD, and they, but some of them seemed to be very mild. When we followed them up 10 years later, they were definitely not, you know, really mild cases. In fact, their outcome is even worse uh, than boys who had more severe problems when they were young. And I think one of the reasons for that is that in this study, as in several others that we've done, if girls get a diagnosis of autism or ADHD, they're not going to get help they're not going to get the same degree of help as a boy with the same kind of diagnosis. The usual situation, at least in our country, is, well, we hear what you say. I, well, we don't think she's very autistic, and we don't see a lot of the ADHD problems that you talk about. Uh, but, of, OK, we'll accept your diagnosis. And then we come with a plan uh, for education and for health and uh, you know, even medication. Um, and everybody says, okay, we'll stick with it, because you say so. If we do that with the boys uh, and follow the boys up two, five years later, they virtually always got what we uh, asked for. When we look at the girls, virtually nobody got what we asked for. 
uh, it was just, you know, forgotten. No, but she's not that, it, it's not that bad. And then suddenly she cuts her wrists and, you know, comes to the emergency ward. Uh, and then people say, oh my God, what happened? We didn't see anything. They said there was something, but we, don't, we didn't really believe it. Uh, again, this is because most girls with these kinds of problems are not as obvious as the boys in terms of things like acting out or aggression or violence, and they don't even seem to be that unsociable uh, compared to the boys. We know that girls in the general population are less gross motorically active than boys, uh, and more maybe superficially, but they appear to be more sociable uh, and more social. And their social language development is definitely way ahead of the boys. That's in the general population. So if a girl has problems in these domains, they will be masked by these sort of uh, basic uh, superiorities as compared to the boys. But having said that, it's extremely important to know that individual variation is enormous. Uh, and you could have a boy who's much more like a girl without being transgender or anything, and the opposite as well. Having said that, though, I think, I'm not sure what's happening here, but in our country, uh, gender dysphoria is suddenly booming. It's, I mean, it's perhaps the next most popular diagnosis, if you will. Uh, it's becoming uh, a huge problem that um, also some of the people with essence uh, are greatly overrepresented among uh, the people who, who come for um, it, uh, various um, interventions for transgender. Um, and in, I think the evidence still is very limited as regards um, how to proceed in, in that domain. So how should we plan for best recognition and intervention in autism in females? Um, so. Think about autism and ADHD and DCD and Tourette and other essence in all young girls presenting with emotional, behavioral, cognitive learning or coordination problems. Always don't start thinking, is it depression or anxiety? I'm not saying you shouldn't think that at the next stage. Of course you should. But they shouldn't be your primary concern unless there is overt suicidal behavior. Uh, and yet, the situation is quite the opposite. Nobody thinks about these things until they've ruled out all sorts of other things and treated depression without success for months and months, etc. Think about these things first. Maybe you'll find the reason why they're depressed, why they're anxious in the ADHD or the autism. And maybe they won't need the special medications, for instance. Uh, also, always think about autism in girls presenting with severe eating problems at any age uh, and of ADHD in those with bulimia and early high uh, uh, BMI. Be aware that the obvious phenotype might not be so obvious at all and that you may have to have the sort of concept of autism and or ADHD in your own head when you look at a new patient with any kind of uh, eating or, or mental problem. And again, just as in uh, other cases of essence, think about everything. Don't think just one thing.